Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everyone. Jason here, and today I think we're going to start with a brand new survival game in No Man's Sky. So I play a lot of permadeath. I play a lot of normal mode or, you know, the uh, expedition whenever it's available. But I haven't really jumped into survival mode. So in survival mode, you have a uh, more hazards, smaller inventory, and increased cost for all of your stuff, meaning your fuel cost, the cost for like uh, your hazard protection, your life support is going to cost a little bit more to recharge it. And there's also a bonus, uh, I guess, issue you could call it is when you die, you don't, your, your save is still there. Don't worry, you do respawn. However, everything in your inventory when you die is destroyed. So there's no way you cannot go pick it up again. You can't go get it. If you're holding on to a whole bunch of good stuff and then you die, all that stuff is gone. You have to start over. Now, you have all your technology, that kind of stuff, but all the materials, all the, like, your money, your, your money still stays there. Don't even worry about it. Your money's there. Your nanites are there. Just your items in your backpack. So that is one of the deals we're going to have to to kind of be wary of. You don't want to die. Now, it's not as bad as permadeath, because permadeath, you die and your game is erased. But it's very similar. Like, you're going to take the same amount of damage generally. Your inventory is limited, but not as much. You know, so you, you it is a little bit easier than permadeath. Don't get me wrong. But it's way harder than normal mode. And the uh, I think this is a good idea if you want to test it out to see... Just because there's a lot of bugs in No Man's Sky. I don't know if you guys have been playing No Man's Sky. <laughs> but there are a lot of bugs. And I've had a lot of people say, look, I had this weird glitch where my, my oxygen meter was going down on a planet. I was just walking around. I don't understand. I had a whole bunch of problems. and Or my, my character just died. I took a whole bunch of damage and I died on permadeath and it's over. That is crazy. So if you want something kind of safer, again, you will lose your materials. But you won't lose your save. That's a good thing, right? I would suggest trying out survival modes. It's a little bit more difficult than normal. Let's see uh, if you go into your inventory, it'll show you the limits. So there you are right there. So you see how it says five out of 500. So the maximum stack is 500 instead of 9,999 in a normal uh, save. And so in general, I will always tell you find a cave if you start a brand new save, find a cave because that will definitely help you out for, uh, you know, getting cobalt. You'll be able to make batteries for your hazard protection, all that kind of stuff. And also check these out here. These damage machineries, the machinery, they will, you know, they'll have this. This is kind of trash and you can pick it up and you can sell it for a thousand bucks. They can be useful, but I always just get rid of it. But these uh, damaged machinery items can give you nanites like that. We got 29 nanites. However, there's always a possibility. It's a low possibility, but there is a possibility of getting an upgrade or other items out of that. You can get starship launch fuel. You can get, you know, uh, upgrades for your ship, upgrades for your, uh, your suit, all kinds of stuff like that. So always check them out, especially in early on. Once you start playing the game and getting your own upgrades... You're basically set. You wouldn't need to worry about those as much. But in the beginning, it really does help. So you'll see I'm getting a whole bunch of uh, ferrite dust. We got 87, so that's good enough for that. We only needed 75. So our scanner is done. Now we need to get some, fer uh, some carbon because we need to make a scanner or a visor for our suit. So once we have our visor, we'll be able to see where our ship is. Get a whole bunch of uh, dihydrogen because that'll help us out with our uh, our broken ship. Now, we're not doing a no starter ship challenge or anything like that. We're just going to do a normal run through and just see, you know, the differences. See what's in the game now that we've had a few updates since our last full playthrough. And also, what kind of changes in uh, survival versus normal mode? Because usually I play in normal mode. All right, so we picked up some uh, sodium. Let's uh, recharge it with our sodium. We need to get some of that. We can also pick these. You see these red orbs? These gassy pods? Pick that. 
Right there, boom. You can pick it right off these guys. Get a whole bunch of oxygen before you destroy them. You will not get that oxygen if you just straight up, like, destroy the plant. You have to pick them first before you can get them. Grab this one. Again, this is usually junky, trashy items. You can pick it up and keep it, but since we're playing survival mode, our inventory is very limited. I don't want to waste all my, my room by picking up that kind of stuff. And we got nanites again. So our ship is over here. Now along the way, we are going to get some uh, carbon from these plants. I'm on a uh, I'm on a cold planet, so there sometimes, depending on your cold planet, it can uh, be difficult to find carbon. So some of them they'll have like forest everywhere, and like this one's decent, so it's not bad. There's some cold planets that don't have any. It doesn't feel like there's any plants around. Now, I'm getting a little nervous. Yeah, we're getting some damage going on here. Okay, we need to find some more sodium. I was right next to it. Oh, God. We need to go down here, get some. I was right next to this. There we go. We got some more. Now, yeah, in the beginning, you're going to need some sodium. I mean, eventually, we'll be able to get some batteries going once we find a cave. But right now, we don't have a cave, so we're kind of stuck with it. We have some condensed carbon. I like it. So you can get the small crystals. The big crystals will not work. You need a better laser. You need an advanced mining beam for that. Where'd my sodium go? There you are. Now, if I had a terrain manipulator, I'd be able to just go underground. But I don't. We start off, you don't have the blueprint to make that. So you got to go with whatever they give you. There we go. Yeah, you'll see I'll just be uh, hitting my scanner every once in a while just to see if there's anything near me. And also looking around for a cave. How much uh, carbon do we have? We have 163. We got enough. So we need to make one nanotube because we'll use that to make our visor right here. Analysis visor. There we go. So now we can get our little camera mode and we can see what's around. So we can see our ship right there. But we can also scan, you know, animals like this. Get a little bit of money early on. That'll help out. We need some of this right here. You can use this as fuel. You can use it as, uh, like, for your mining beam. So... Don't oh, like that right there. Boom. It's way more fuel efficient to use condensed carbon versus regular carbon on your mining beam. So don't don't uh, pass that up when you can or if you, you know, if you see it. All right, let's go. Get some more sodium right here. I'm not seeing any caves around. So... The other way you can find a cave... Oh, look, there's a building over there. The other way you can find a cave is look for subterranean relics. Buried mineral formation. Buried cache. No subterranean relics. That's okay. Yeah, seriously, we're not seeing any caves around here. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, dang, it's just a hole. I thought it was a cave. Get over here. And if you see these little yellow and red boxes, pick them up. Go through them. They will give you some random items, random materials. So always useful to get some random stuff. Maybe they'll give me some sodium. And... Got some carbon, some condensed carbon out of there. And we got a little bit of sodium. I uh, like a very little bit. That's all right. Sodium. Oh, there's a patch of sodium over here. So... Sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll see a couple like this or you'll see the big old patch right there. That's what I'm looking for. Beautiful. If you can't find a cave, look for these. You get lucky sometimes like that. That's pretty good. Come on, come on. There we go. Let me recharge my... There we go. Now we're good. While we're out here waiting. All right, that's good. We got a whole bunch of sodium. We are awesome. Set and ready to go. 
Now, the other thing you can use the condensed carbon for is a hermetic seal, but you don't know, we don't know that uh, material yet, or we don't know how to build that yet. Oh, yeah, and also, look at this. Okay, the other thing you want to know is, you see how it says unidentified mineral with ferrite dust underneath, so we know we're going to get ferrite dust, which is like a basic building block. But then it says analyze with question marks around it. That means there's a secondary material, but we don't know what it is until we scan it. Scan that thing. Now we know it's dihydrogen, so we're going to get ferrite dust and dihydrogen from these rocks. Now, in general, if you get, you know, your main material, that ferrite dust is going to be your main one. You're going to get a whole bunch of ferrite dust, and you'll get like one or two, maybe even three of the dihydrogen. You'll get like a handful of the secondary material. Let's get in here. Grab this container. And again, we can refine this, or we could sell it, or just junk it, because it's junk. But there's plenty of ferrite dust. You get ferrite dust out of uh, rusted metal, so... If you really are hard up for ferrite dust, sure, pick it up. But if you don't need it, like there's plenty of rocks around here, you don't need it. So I can just do this and get a whole bunch of ferrite dust. Not a big deal. And it's going to be a lot faster, because it takes you about a minute or two minutes, depending on how large your stack of rusted metal is. It's going to take you about a minute to do that, whereas it took me, what, 10 seconds to just get these rocks? So there you go. We have our, uh, a beacon over here. Scenario, iteration, long number. Boundary separation failure, likely. Vessel 16 emptied. Cause, sentinel intervention. Deliberate transfer. Analysis, fresh iteration generated. Anomaly containment prepared. Let's broadcast. Broadcast received. Traveler anomaly detected. Anomaly is compliant. Position logged. System integrity scan initialized. So we are compliant because we broadcast our location. So now everyone knows. Oh, we have a damaged machinery here. Let's pick this thing up. Get rid of the trash. We got more nanites. That's what you're going to get most of the time. So we're going to need life support. So what we need to do is we need to make a... A dihydrogen jelly, which is those blue crystals that we were picking up. Make that. And then, if you mix dihydrogen, one jelly with 20 carbon, you get one life support gel. That'll fill up your life support completely. So it's very beneficial to do that. Let's pop in here. Wait a minute. Actually, we need to make a metal plating. We need to make a couple metal plating. So let's do one, two... And anytime you don't know, like, what you need, like, if you're saying, oh, I want to make a warp cell, but I don't know what I need, you can view the crafting steps. And it won't just give you the crafting steps you need for the warp cell. It'll actually tell you, oh, you need a housing, but how do you make a housing? It'll tell you the whole tree. That way you could go, okay, this is what I need to make this. This is what, these are the materials I need to make, antimatter. And once I do that, then I can make the warp cell. There you go. So it's very, very cool. Again, if you're in your menu, hit the X button, like over here. It's the X button if you're on Xbox or square if you're on PlayStation. It's right there in your menu. View crafting steps. So anytime you get lost, you're like, I don't know. I forgot how to believe me. I do too. I forgot how to make this thing. It'll just give you the tree. That way you don't have to worry about it. Uh, Atlas connection intermittent launch thrusters. Offline. Pulse engine. Offline. I find myself alone on a strange world. Unequipped and in danger. I have no memory of how I got here. No sense of a before. But this ship, at least it seems to recognize me. The controls react to my touch, or at least that of my exosuit. I am not dead yet, and this ship is a lifeline out to the stars. Well, let's connect our exosuit. Log 4925A, unavailable. Substituting data. Exosuit, connected. Suggestion, pilot should perform maintenance. Select desired repair path. Well, we're going to repair the ship. Self-guided repair protocols initiated. So now we have our pulse engine. We need one hermetic seal and one metal plated. We already made that. So we need to fix our pulse engine first. So we don't have a, we don't have a hermetic seal. The other thing we can do is we need to fix our launch thrusters as well. 
We need pure ferrite and dihydrogen jelly. We don't have enough materials for that either. So we're gonna look around again, use your scanner and look for the blue H that's dihydrogen. And dihydrogen is all over every planet. If you walk more than a hundred feet, you're gonna run into dihydrogen. These blue crystals are everywhere. So just pop over and grab some. You're gonna need 40. We already have a little bit already in our uh, molt, in our uh, in our uh, inventory, so we don't need too much. But I want to grab as much as I can. There's also a faster way to do all of this, and I'll show you that once we get our uh, ship working, we can do uh, strafe farming, so we can grab a whole bunch of materials just by shooting the ground. It's very very cool. Life support's getting really low, so let's fill that up. Make a, a dihydrogen gel. We also need to make some pure ferrite, so. We have portable refiner in our inventory. We know how to make that automatically. We need one metal plating and 30 oxygen. Keep in mind, they know you're going to need oxygen. So right next to where your crashed ship is, there's always going to be this little patch of oxygen. It's just by default. They always give you enough oxygen right next to where you're at, where your uh, crashed ship is. That way, there's no way you can run out of it. You know, you don't have to run, like, all over the, the planet trying to find it. So let's make it. 30 oxygen, one metal plating. And now with a refiner, you need to put fuel in here. That way they can convert anything. So you can use condensed carbon, which we will use. Or regular carbon. Condensed carbon is more fuel efficient. And then we need to put in some ferrite dust. Because if you refine ferrite dust, it'll turn it into pure ferrite because you're refining it down the problem is we don't have enough so let's get some more ferrite dust uh, over here on these random rocks all over the place and unidentified let's scan all of this stuff hey how am i getting cold damage yeah well we're not gonna worry about it yet let's get our uh, ferrite dust here because if you need to just jump into your ship and it'll recharge your hat your hazard protection, excuse me. That way you're not using anything. You're not using your hazard protection on foot. The other thing I like to do is I like to organize my inventory. So I, I put everything that I generally use all together so I know where it is. But, you know, you put whatever, put whatever you want where you need it. But I this is generally how I set my suit up. I do my ferrite dust and pure ferrite and magnetized ferrite. So I have... My left column from bottom to top is going to be all ferrite. So ferrite dust, pure ferrite, magnetized ferrite. And then you have my uh, carbon. So carbon and then condensed carbon. Right next to that is my oxygen. And then my sodium and sodium nitrate. So I try to put the, the less refined materials at the bottom and my more refined at the top. It's weird. It's just how my brain works. I know. But that just helps me keep in line. That way, if I'm panicking, I'm like, oh, no, I need that thing. I can just hit my inventory, and I know exactly where it's going to be. So I, if I'm in the middle of a panic, I can automatically go to it like a reflex. All right. Let's add some more uh, ferrite dust in here. So we need 50. And because ferrite dust turns one to one, so one ferrite dust turns one into one pure ferrite. So we can get that done. And we have our uh, our jelly, metal plating, dihydrogen jelly, pure ferrite. So let's fix, let's put our one metal in here. Now, don't worry if you don't have all the materials. You don't have to fix it all at once. You can just say, oh, I only need, I only have half of my material, so I can only fix it halfway. And also pick up your refiner. That way we can use it later on. You can keep using these. Once you put it down, it's not permanent. You can pick it back up. So right click in your right thumbstick. And there you go, get everything back. But yeah, so we cannot fully fix our pulse engine. However, we can. We had the one metal plating, so we were able to just throw that one in there. And then it'll stay like that until we completely fix it. What's going on here? Oh, there we go. Functional, starship critically damaged, vital ingredient missing. You're unable to synthesize required component. Pulse engine requires a hermetic seal. So we don't know how to make that. We don't have the blueprint. We're going to ask it for help. Recommendation. Iteration comparison reveals hermetic seal nearby. Salvage your planetary chart from a distress beacon cache. Or cache. So, we don't know how to make a, a hermetic seal, but we can go find the blueprint. We also 
can fix our launch thruster because we have our dihydrogen jelly and our pure ferret. We just did that. But we still need our hermetic seal, so let's get out. In the distress beacon, there is going to be a planetary chart. I peer inside the beacon's housing. As well as its distress broadcast unit, it contains a planetary chart. I love the new animations in here. It's so good. They used to not have that big red orb do that. All right. Now, any planetary chart will give you the location of whatever that chart is for. This one is specifically to find a hermetic seal. But you get ones for, like, an alien ruin or a uh, secured site, like a manufacturing facility, things like that. There's different uh, charts in the game. This one is only for your hermetic seal, but once you fire it off by pressing X if you're on Xbox or square if you're on PlayStation, it'll mark the nearest location of the uh, whatever you're looking for. In this case, our hermetic seal. So we know there's a hermetic seal right over there, and it is 900 feet away. Now, be careful. Make sure you have enough uh, sodium because this is going to be a tutorial a mission on how to survive a storm on a planet. So as we're going over there, the, a storm is going to happen. It always does. It just it basically is just trying to teach you how to deal with storms on planets. Every, I shouldn't say every, most planets have storms. We're on a cold planet, so we're going to have a snowstorm, a blizzard. If you're on a hot planet, you're going to have a heat storm. If you're on a radiation, you're going to have a radiation storm. Things like that. Every planet, for the most part. You'll find paradise planets. They're the only ones that don't have storms. Get on my health. We're getting low on our thermal. And if you need to, look around for sodium as you're running there. So pick up some more sodium. We use that. Unless you have batteries. If you have batteries, you're way good to go. Blizzard coming right now. Great. And again, check the red containers, check the yellow containers. They will have cool items in there. Maybe not the item you're looking for, but it's going to be a, an item. You know, something useful. Somewhat. Oh, we got a life support shell out of there. Thank God. That's easy enough. All right. Up oh, that building over there. We need to get to this building quick before the storm hits. Yep. Here it comes. You can see now it's getting kind of cloudy. So the, the other thing you'll see is that I do a, a what I call, what's generally called a jetpack boost or a shoulder boost. So in the game, if you are uh, running around on the ground and you want to go faster, you can by hitting your melee button. So that's going to be your right shoulder button right there. And you do a little punch, right? Well, if you use your jetpack immediately afterwards, it'll actually put you in like a forward thrusting boost so you can actually go faster so let me show you while you're running you go melee jetpack like you hit your jetpack immediately after you melee because your your shoulder is still going forward your arm is still going forward so you look like superman flying through the air it's really really cool and very useful when you're trying to get somewhere really quickly so do that and get inside quickly let's get in here now we're protected from the elements. Yeah. But yeah, shoulder boost, I use it constantly. It is an awesome feature. They tried to get a, they tried to get rid of it. Like that was actually not an intended feature in the beginning of the game. And then, you know, everyone found out it was a bug and so they just kept it in. So that's a uh, actual useful bug. All right, let's go over here. So we need to find our uh, hollow archive. There it is. We'll get our blueprint for our hermetic seal. Accessing archive. Six out of seven logs corrupted. Entry 4924A follows. No one making this recording just in case. Leaving behind something in the fabricator. It might be of some use. Visor damaged. Can't find ship. So someone left it here. They couldn't find their ship they died i would be it would be so awesome if we found like an empty suit or some bones outside that would be really cool because it feels like someone got lost their visor was broken and they just left the hermetic seal blueprint here <laughs> let's recover the supplies the log finishes and the machine whirls to life 
spitting out supplies. I have the hermetic seal I need to repair my ship. Whoever it was that led me here, whoever left this message, perhaps they found themselves in the same situation as I do now. Here we go, got our hermetic seal, and now we know how to make them ourselves, so we can make them if we need to. Terminal Online, Universal Translation Service, so let's learn a word. That's our dictionary right there. Restore my shields, there you go. But yeah, so that is part of our inventory now, so if you need to, like if you find another crashed ship, and you can, you can go ship hunting. Go fly around a planet and you'll find you'll run into ships that have crashed into the planet and they're broken. You're gonna need a hermetic seal to fix them. This is a oh, this is a cave! Alright, so this is what I was trying to do in the beginning when we first uh, spawned up. So you want to come into a cave because number one, it shields you from the elements. So now I'm not using my hazard protection. But number two, you can actually farm cobalt out of these uh, stalactites. The, uh, the cave rocks. And if you do that, you can use cobalt to actually make batteries for your hazard protection. So they're very, very, very useful. All right, so let's uh, farm it. We, uh, we scanned it. That way we can actually uh, know what it is. We get that secondary material, which is silver. That's a very useful one. It's silver. You can sell for a lot of money. Platinum and silver. There you go. Tritium! Okay, tritium is good. That's good for fuel for your ship. It's uh, pulse engine fuel. You're basically your uh, your thruster fuel. Not your launch thruster, your, uh, your engine fuel. All right, cobalt. Now, the, th the other thing you need is ferrite dust. You need ferrite dust and cobalt in order to make batteries. Oh, we have some ionized cobalt, which is a more refined version of regular cobalt. And actually, that's what we're going to do here. Boom. Boom. So, we have 149 cobalt. Very, very good. We don't have any of our uh, ferrite dust because we used it all to make our pure ferrite. Sorry. Organizing again. I know. All right. We're, we're going to need ferrite dust as well. So while we're in the cave, just make sure to get a good amount of cobalt. Now, tr you know, old school No Man's Sky players know that cobalt was very useful for uh, selling to make you money. They have actually nerfed it now to where you don't make it nearly as much money ba as you did back in the day. Last, you know, a year ago, two years ago, you could make a cobalt farm and make millions and millions off of cobalt. Now... I mean, it, it's you can still do that, but it takes so much more of it because, you know, you, the price per unit is way down. Like right there, you can see. I have, set, I have a stack of 231 cobalt, and that'll give me 17000 That's a lot of money, right? That's only $76 per each, you know, each cobalt. That used to be 400 per each one. So it was way what you'd get over 100000 for this stack way back in the day. Now we're getting 17,000. So you, can you make a lot of money? Sure. Is it actually worth it? Is it viable compared to back in the day? No, not, not even close. So yeah, there's no right or wrong way. You can make money doing anything in No Man's Sky. The only, the only uh, difference between all of it is the time spent to benefit. Time benefit ratio. How much money are you going to get for how much time it takes you to make it? And, I mean, there's other things you can do to make a lot more money a lot faster in No Man's Sky. So that's why a lot of people have abandoned it. Because they're like, yeah, it used to be cool, but now it takes forever and you need a lot of inventory space. And it's just not worth it anymore. Get some of this carbon. We're going to need some ferrite dust. Remember, we need ferrite dust to make our batteries. And I always re re recommend batteries versus sodium. Because you're going to blow through a lot of sodium refilling your hazard protection versus a battery. One battery will fill you up almost all the way. We are playing on survival mode, which costs a little bit more. So I think one battery will give you 80% of your, uh, your uh, hazard protection. So you can just use one battery and get most of your hazard protection back. Now, be careful. The quick menu... And if you, didn't, uh, if you don't know what the quick menu is, if you press down on your D-pad, 
you'll see this little menu here that gives you all your quick items like your refill, you're calling in your ship, your pets, your utilities, that kind of stuff. But if you go into your recharge equipment, it'll automatically try to give you whatever you need. So it'll, t it'll tell me, oh, you need 47 oxygen to refill your life support or you need one life support gel. All right. If it gets low enough, it'll ask you for two, even though you only need one and a half. It rounds up. And so technically you could be wasting one life support or one battery. It'll ask you for two when you only need one and a half. There we go. Let's go back to our ship while we're here. Let's scan that. There's a building over here I want to see because it's really close to our ship. What is this building? What is this building? Life support's getting low. So I'm purposely letting it get really low because I want to show you. When I go to my life support, it'll say I need two. See, it says I need two, but I only have one. The number you have is inside the parentheses. So the two on the outside is how much you need. The one is how much you have, right? Now watch this. I'm at 5% life support. If I put in one gel, I, it gave me 85%. So now I'm at 89. So you get 85% for one gel. Why would they ask for two? Because they round up. And because they round up, it will actually waste your resources on the higher difficulties. On normal, don't even worry about it. It will never ask you for more than one. But on the higher difficulties, on survival, on permadeath, it will actually make you use more than you need. It'll round it up and just screw you over because it wants to get you to 100%. It doesn't care how many you need. It just wants you to get to 100%. Where's this, min where's this thing at? What is this thing? Oh, it's just a little save beacon? Oh, I thought it was going to be some building or something. That's all right. We got this damage machinery. We can use this. So yeah, be careful. If you're playing survival or you're playing on permadeath, keep an eye on that thing. You'll see, you'll notice I will manually do it. I will do it uh, in the menus rather than my quick bar because the quick bar screws you over for materials. Now... There's times where I'm going to be panicking and I'm just going to, I am just going to do quick bar because I need to do it quickly. And that's a waste, but that's because I'm in a panic. <laughs> Most of the time, I'll just either use my, uh, my materials like oxygen or sodium, or I will manually do it in the menus with a life support gel or a battery. Getting some more dihydrogen. So we have all the materials we need to fix our ship. So we're about to get out of here, you guys. I'm excited. Now, before we leave, I told you we're gonna use we're gonna get a whole bunch of materials by uh, strafe farming. So strafe farming is basically doing like a drive-by. You're just flying low, shooting the ground, and getting all the rocks you possibly can off of the ground. Let's get in here. Engine is broken. Let's fix it. We have our hermetic seal now. And we're done. We're fixed. So that'll tell you, hey, you can go. You're good. So before you leave, before you leave the planet, stay in first person. Because you can switch to third if you want. But it's easier to do this in first. And just shoot the rocks on the ground. Just do this. All the rocks, all the uh, plants, everything that's destructible and it's on the surface, you could totally destroy and pick up all those materials. Like, look at my my uh, my inventory right here. I have 100 ferrite dust, 11 carbon, two oxygen. You know, I have very little, right? But it's, I just keep shooting the ground. Get a whole bunch of shoot the trees if you want. Get a whole bunch of carbon. You can use your rockets as well, but be careful because they splash damage. If you're too close to it, it'll damage you as well as the rocks on the ground. Now you are limited. You can't get the more advanced items, like this big rock right here. It says pure ferrite. I need my advanced mining laser. If it's if it's something that needs a special tool, you're not going to be able to farm it with your ship. You can just get the basics from the ground. This is a really good way to get a whole bunch of stuff. Same thing for like this. This is my cobalt or dioxide. Can't get it. 
because you need a special tool to farm that. You need your terrain manipulator, so you won't be able to get that. Now looking here, look at 400. We're already getting up there. Look at that. That's crazy. Now, I believe your ship has the same inventory limits as your backpack does. But we're going to test that out. I want to see. I'm going to try to get my ferrite dust above 500. It is. Oh, look at that. It's above 500. How much is it? I bet you maybe it's 1,000. Maybe it's 999. All right. So it is useful to have everything in your ship because you have more room in there. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. I didn't know. They, they changed that. It used to be the same all over the place. So your backpack was the same as your ship, which never made sense to me because, I mean, your ship is larger than you are. However, that was the rules back in the day. Now they've changed that. I like that. All right. I like it. So you can get the dihydrogen if you want. You can get the uh, crystals, the condensed carbon crystals, the small ones, not the big one, the small ones you can farm. All right. That should be enough, right? Yeah. Yep. We're up to 600. Okay. I think it's a thousand. That's okay. Well, let's get out into space. Now we're going to switch over to a uh, third person because I like third person when I'm flying. I like seeing my ship. So you can do that in your hot bar. Again, your uh, quick bar down at the bottom of the screen. When you press down on your D-pad, you can do that. So once you get into to space, they want you to kind of fly around and get used to that. So they want you to, uh, you know, hit the boost, which is uh, B or O if you're on PlayStation, B if you're on Xbox, and you kind of boost a little bit. If you want to pulse drive, which is basically go really, really fast, not not light speed, but basically really, really quick, uh, left bumper, right bumper, or R1 and L1 if you're on PlayStation. And there you go. And there we are. Easy peasy. And now we have a call. Incoming transmission. Source 4925B. Please identify yourself. I'm, and it cuts out. Okay, let's uh, let's identify ourselves. I'm Jason. You are not alone. Follow the, and it cuts out again. The broadcast ends as strangely as it began. The final piece of the signal appears to be a set of planetary coordinates. Let's input the data. So now we're going to be following who is calling us. Where are these coordinates? So kind of go around a little bit. Up oh, there you go, right there on this planet over here. So that is where we're going to be heading in the next episode, you guys. So hopefully you guys liked the episode. If you did, hit that like button for me, and I will see you guys in the next one where we're uh, No Man's Sky Survivors. Yeah.